Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Michael Gregor live from my treadmill. Here to answer any and all questions you may have. I did a Facebook Live earlier today and uh, doing YouTube now. We'll do this every month. For those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. I then compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, the most practical findings into new videos and articles I upload every day to my website, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no commercial, uh, no uh, corporate sponsorship, strictly not commercial, not selling anything, just putting it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, who is the reason that I went into medicine and practice lifestyle medicine to this day. Let me start at the top and I will go through the questions and hopefully get to yours. Paul asks, are there any health concerns associated with drinking water from plastic bottles? Uh, yes, there are. If you look at, um, there are both microbiological um, concerns as well as chemical concerns. So for example, uh, from uh, polycarbonate plastic, if you uh, search on nutritionfacts.org for the word, for the letters BPA, um, uh, you will see um, uh, videos about some of these plastics chemicals. Also, um, phthalates, start, um, spelled with a P, P-T-H, um, A-L-A-T-E-S. Um, uh, check out those, or just uh, type in plastics or plastic into nutritionfacts.org in a little search bar. All my videos will come up, um, and you can enjoy. Lance asks, how do I prevent water intoxication? If I don't salt my foods, um, uh, if uh, um, so, hyponatremia is uh, is uh, you can actually wash out the electrolytes in your system if you um, exercise intensely, sweat a lot, and are just drinking pure water. Um, the concern was that wait a second, don't I have to add salt to my food? As if for millions of years of evolution, we had salt shakers sitting there. Um, uh, no need to add salt to food, um, uh, but we should, uh, but if you are um, excessively exercising, you need to replete your electrolytes. That's the whole kind of Gatorade thing. You can do it a lot uh, healthier than just drinking sugar water um, by um, uh, eating uh, actual food like fruit. Um, and uh, so we should get all our sodium from natural sources, not from salt shaker, not from processed foods. You do not have to take a bag of potato chips on your bike rides. Um, uh, Seabird asks, I'm requesting an option to see Spanish subtitles. Absolutely. In fact, we have Spanish subtitles on hundreds of videos. People don't realize that if you do a search for videos on nutritionfacts.org, um, there's language options. You can say, I just want to see the ones with Polish subtitles or Russian subtitles or, uh, you know, uh, Italian subtitles. Um, and uh, Spanish is actually our most common one. We've got um, hundreds of videos already translated. We have a whole team of translation volunteers. You actually can be one of those if you'd like to help out. We're actually going to um, convert the entire site into Spanish. So not just the subtitles for all the videos, but like all the wording on the site. So it'll be like a little flag. You know, you go to some websites and there's like, you can choose your language. Um, well, it's gonna be the same thing nutritionfacts.org where you can see it in English and you can see the entire site in Spanish. Um, uh, and then we're gonna to move to other languages um, to uh, broaden the uh, number of people that can have access to this life changing, life saving information. But right now you can access those Spanish subtitles by just doing a um, search on nutritionfacts.org and then clicking the Spanish language button. All right, Laura asks, Coumadin, I've been uh, um, uh, diagnosed ah, with a thrombus, a clot takes warfarin um, uh, uh, every day um, to maintain uh, an INR. Are there vegetarian studies guaranteed reversal without anticoagulants? Absolutely not. You need anti, if you have excessively clotting blood for whatever reason, or if you have a heart valve or any kind of internal hardware that could cause your blood to clot, um, although uh, there is, um, there are, uh, there's basically what's called salicylic acid, which is kind of the active ingredient in aspirin, found in plant foods, not just in willow bark, where it was originally 
um, uh, harvested from. Um, and so uh, people eating plant-based diets, particularly eating spicy plant-based diets, because a lot of salicylates in uh, uh, spices like cumin, um, uh, you will have blood levels of aspirin, um, which rival that of people actually taking a baby aspirin, um, a, a small dose aspirin pill every day. Even though you're not on aspirin, you have the same aspirin doses in your body. That may actually be, be beneficial in terms of reducing um, uh, not only uh, heart disease risk, um, stroke risk, certain types of stroke risk, as well as cancer risk. And I've got a bunch of videos coming up on aspirin and cancer, but that's not, your blood would not be thin enough to uh, prevent clots if you have some excessive clotting disorder. Um, and so if your physician wants you on Coumadin, um, uh, then you need to, uh, to uh, remain on Coumadin as long and just make sure that you, they titrate the greens consumption, your dark green leafy vegetable consumption, the amount of Coumadin, because basically Coumadin is a vitamin K poison. And so um, if you eat a lot of vitamin K, you need to up your dose to uh, keep them in line. All right. Um, uh, okay, Lance. Okay. Um, Lance is just making some comments. That's good. Okay. I'm going to keep going down. Um, uh, um, I don't know how to pronounce uh, a J O A with a little thing on it. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, the, the said he has an exam with 289 pico um, grams per milliliter of B12. Uh, is that a healthy level? Um, uh, you, um, uh, assuming those are the units I'm familiar with, um, yes, that would be fine. Um, but you still would want to take, the question is, should you uh, continue to take vitamin B12? Of course you should. Uh, 2,500 micrograms once a week of cyanocobalamin is probably all you or anyone should need. Um, and you say, well, wait a second, what if my levels are fine? Well, they won't be fine for long if you don't get a regular reliable source of vitamin B12. Um, uh, I, uh, Sarah read an article from a nutrigenomics company saying that your genes determine um, whether or not um, uh, uh, animal or plant-based omega-3s are good for you. All omega-3s are originally plant-based um, uh, um, and are then created by animals such as yourselves when you eat them. Um, uh, there may be polymorphisms, of, which means kind of gene variations in um, uh, the delta-6 desaturase enzymes, the elongation enzymes. Um, but um, uh, And so uh, uh, um, one may want to take a preformed long-chain omega-3 uh, fatty acid supplement. I've got a bunch of videos, new videos about that, so check it out. A vitamin Lindsay says, what do I think about intermittent fasting? I've got a bunch of videos on intermittent fasting coming up. I keep saying that, but I do. Um, and uh, it's actually a really complex topic. Um, and But I will be talking about all the variations of intermittent fasting, water-only fasting, um, uh, the timing, duration of meals, all sorts of good stuff. It's all coming out. Um, it's not that I'm trying to keep anything from you. I just haven't read all the science yet. There's a tremendous load, hundreds of new articles. Um, and so I want to make sure I have a sense of where they're going, just uh, um, uh, doing kind of a light reading. But I want to do a deep dive before I, uh, uh, before I synthesize all the available science. All right, Michael, good name, asks if you take a DHA, EPA supplement, how much ALA should you get every day, as it's still important to keep an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, 4 to 1. Um, uh, so um, if you're already getting, pre I mean, so the reason one wants to keep their um, ratio um, uh, relatively low of omega-6 to omega-3s is uh, to kind of facilitate your body's elongation of the short chain omega-3s found in flax seeds and walnuts um uh into the long chain versions um but uh so do you still need to do that if you're taking um uh you know and and do you need to get a source of uh of uh, of ala like flax seeds or uh, walnuts or hemp nuts or chia seeds if you're already taking that and my answer is yes to both but not for the reason one might think so i mean what's the recommendation to to uh about omega-6 ratio it's stay away from junky 
uh, vegetable oils like uh, corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, and cottonseed oil. So you'd still want to do that regardless for all sorts of reasons. Um, and uh, why, so do you not have to take flax seeds now if you're getting a, a preformed source of, of uh, DHA? Well, omega-3s aren't the only reason we eat uh, super healthy foods like flax seeds and walnuts. They have other health promoting compounds. For example, flax seeds have these anti-cancer lignan compounds, um, which, you know, uh, you would be missing out on. So I'd still stick with my daily dozen recommendation to get a tablespoon of ground flax seeds every day for the other health benefits. Um, Priscilla talked about BPA at the beginning. Um, um, Cyrano, are there plant foods that reverse postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome and small fiber neuropathy? Um, I do not know of any, um, uh, but if you do a, a PubMed search, so if you go pubmed.gov, G-O-V, um, that's the database of the National Library of Medicine, the largest medical library in the world. And you type in whatever syndrome that you're interested in and the word diet or foods or such and uh, studies come up, um, I'd be happy to look at them. Uh, send them my way. I will dig them up. And if there's something interesting, useful for others, I will sh make a video about it and share it with others. All right, Steve, what foods would I recommend for a toddler to have on a daily basis? Ooh, like a daily dozen toddler version? That's a good idea. I should come up with that. Um, uh, until I do, though, um, I would encourage uh, you to uh, check out wonderful sources like anything Brenda Davis has written or Reed Mengels um, has written. They've both done wonderful um, books and chapters on um, feeding healthy diets to uh, infants and small children. Um, uh, Christine and Amos asked, any research on diet macular degeneration? Very certain there is. I just haven't looked at it yet. I haven't got to my latest eye folder um, uh, studies. I could actually look at it now, but it would take some time. But if there is, I realize that's an issue that a lot of people deal with and will definitely do any videos on uh, any new exciting developments in that area. David asks, what foods increase stamina and energy? I need more than a caffeine jolt. Um, well, um, uh, the, the question is, uh, I mean, you should, as a healthy person, have lots of stamina and energy. And if you don't, if you're tired, fatigued, then instead of uh, caffeine-like jolts or other stimulants that you can certainly try, you treat the cause. You're not getting enough sleep. Do you have an endocrinological hormonal issue or uh, anemia? Or, there's all sorts of things that can make people kind of drag and tired. So you should get uh, diagnosed. Um, so you can go to, for example, plantbaseddocs.com, find somebody who knows a clue about nutrition and treating the cause of lifestyle medicine, treating the cause of disease. Um, and then you shouldn't need to have any kind of jolt in your life because life will be jolt enough. All right. Um, any session? Any suggestions on rosacea? Lots of typical kind of medical um, uh, suggestions, but in terms of dietary suggestions, I don't think I've even have a. Let me see if I even have a um, uh, a uh, a folder on rosacea. I don't think so because I haven't seen any videos. Uh, nope. Um, so I haven't seen any uh, articles come by, but I have a. Um, it's called a PubMed alert on rosacea and diet, uh, meaning you can set up a search in, uh, in PubMed.gov, a uh, National Library of Medicine site, such that even if there isn't any articles currently on what you're interested in, you can sign up for an email alert to get a, an email anytime, anywhere in the world in the peer-reviewed scientific literature, a study is published on your topic. So sign up on anything you're interested in. If something comes by, send it my way and I will get it for you interpret it for you, and if it uh, has broad applicability, um, do a video about it. All right. Um, Steve Oz, is there any evidence that a vegan diet can affect testosterone production? Yes. Um, and uh, I've got a video about that coming up in the next nine weeks. Available now, actually. You can get a sneak peek of all the next nine weeks, or actually about 10 weeks of videos coming on nutritionfacts.org. I just released it on email blast on Tuesday, two days ago. If you did not get that email, you're not subscribed to my free newsletter, so feel free to subscribe if you want. 
Um, and uh, and you and so the video is coming up. You can see it now, streaming and video um, uh, as well. And that's all that information is in the um, email blast, which will come out next week um, as a blog on the site. But if you want to see it now, um, you should subscribe. Um, okay, um, David asks, talk to Oprah about getting your own TV show. Send Dr. Oz. Um, I was actually on uh, Dr. Oz once, which was um, very neat, talking about TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, and the carnitine and choline connection. Uh, would love to do more. Um, uh, and uh, so, yeah, uh, the more people I can reach about evidence-based nutrition, the better. Um, Danielle asked about FODMAPs, another hot research topic I'll be doing a series of videos about, but have yet to read the, uh, I've collected them. Um, we have a team of volunteer article retrievers. You can be one too by signing up, by clicking on the volunteer opportunities button at nutritionfacts.org. We are, uh, uh, retrieving about 1700 articles, um, every week now categorizing. So I have a a massive FODMAPs folder, um, but I have yet to read all the articles and make a series of videos about them. So I uh, will let you know. Um, uh, Catwoman XWX asks, is corn healthy? Well, foods aren't healthy or unhealthy. They are healthier or less healthy, right? So co is corn healthy compared to what? Well, is corn healthy compared to most things? Yeah. Um, uh, I would choose yellow corn or even better purple or blue corn. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, corn in the cob. Um, uh, it's uh, how pe most people eat corn, which is the problem. Uh, like tortilla chips, bad. Um, you know, deep fried, you know, taco shells, bad. But eating corn on the cob, or uh, that's delicious, wonderful. Um, uh, of course, you're not slathering butter on it. Um, what I do is I do uh, hot sauce and black pepper. Um, but do however you like. Oh, you can sprinkle some uh, some uh, balsamic vinegar. That's also yummy too, or at least yummy to me. All right, how much? Uh, uh, oh, vitamin K1, K2. Videos about that coming up. No audio. Are people really not hearing audio? I, there's a note saying there's no audio. I'm hoping people are hearing audio. Otherwise, there'd be lots of, I don't know. Let me know if you are not hearing any audio. Um, here, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Oh, someone hears me. Okay. All right. So, okay. <laughs> I scroll down to comments and other people say, I can hear you. So, I guess we do have audio. Okay. So, I'm scrolling back up to try to not lose my place. Um, uh, where am I? Oh, darn it. Okay. I lost my place. All right. So I'm just gonna scroll down in the middle of comments <laughs> and start answering more where I, where I left off. Oh boy. They're scrolling fast. Okay. Um, I've got does, um, from bloke guy as does freezing whole foods. Um, now someone's calling me. Hopefully that's not in, in regards to the YouTube channel. It'll have to go to voicemail. Does freezing whole foods like potato, rice, and beans ruin nutritional benefits? Um, no. Um, uh, in fact, uh, what a great way to, um, to you know, you make a big pot of beans or pressure cook, which is what I like to do, pressure cook a big pot of beans. In fact, I just did today. Um, ran out of black beans, so was stuck with chickpeas, but that's fine. Uh, big, uh, you know, over the weekend, do a big pot of beans, and then you can freeze it in, in nice little uh, serving-sized containers, and then, uh, you know, throw it in stuff throughout the week. That's a great idea, bloke guy. Uh, the vegan animator asks, does eating carbs make it harder to lose fat? Well, you have to, um, I mean, carbs, as Dr. Katz, David Katz likes to say, carbs are lollipops or lentils. You can't really talk about carbs. We don't eat carbs. We eat food. And there are some carb-rich foods that are bad for you, like cotton candy. There's some carb-rich foods that are fantastic for you, like, you know, pinto beans. Or um, So uh, so that it's you can't really ask that question without – or under, answer that question without really talking about what carbs you're talking about. But does eating pinto beans make it harder to lose fat? No, but if you eat, uh, if you drink soda or something, if you uh, eat a whole bunch of sugar along with fat, your body will store the fat, burn the carbs, and so that would indeed make it hard to lose fat. So don't drink soda. 
drink water or green tea or viscous tea, my three favorite beverages. Um, got some uh, uh, more PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome videos coming up. I think I have one on the website now. I'm talking about the benefits of spearmint tea, but I have some others popping up. Marjoram, I think. That's what it came up earlier at YouTube. I mean, I, excuse me, on Facebook. In fact, let me look um, because I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, because, yes, poly. Oh, here we go. Treating Paul, I have a video coming up soon. Actually, you can watch it right now, streaming in the new DVD. Um, but if not, you can just wait for it to pop up for free um, on nutritionfacts.org. But I can give you, I can read it right now. Okay. Um, Post of Aaron, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. So I basically give the uh, intro, talk about um, uh, how to prevent it, but we want how to treat it, right? So let's keep going down. Do, do, do. Stop smoking. First thing you do is stop smoking. All right. The glycotoxins, the smoke, uh, not only increase the risk of heart disease and cancer, but also um, uh, the uh, problems with PCOS. And so, of course, you'd want to stay away from other high glycotoxin foods like, uh, you know, uh, uh, like um, uh, meat that is cooked with high heat, such as broiling, searing, frying, etc. Um, bah, bah, bah. and then, oh, so basically a low AGE diet. I think that's what this video is coming out with. And you're like, wait a second, what is an AGE? What is a glycotoxin? Just type that into nutritionfacts.org and you can learn all about advanced glycation end products. So eating a low AGE diet evidently um, can help with PCOS as this video coming up soon on Nutrition Facts will tell you all with all the primary sources, of course. All right, um, uh, S. O's Turk, Oz Turk asks, what do I think about nut and seed butter for fit people who want to lose a bit more body fat and build muscle? Well, uh, I, I, um, I, nut and seed butters, uh, I encourage people to eat um, nuts and seeds every day. It's part of the daily dozen uh, checklist of foods. I encourage people to get into their daily diet and you can get a free app iPhone, Android, Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen. Um, and so, yes, I think you should eat it, but uh, not to necessarily uh, 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 lose body fat and build muscle, but just as a, um, as a nutritious food. Um, uh, the way to build muscle is resistance exercise. All right. Um, that vegan surgeon asks... Do you have to buy whole flax seeds or are milled flax seeds okay? Um, are, what if they, aren't they oxidized if they're milled before eating? And the answer is no. You can, uh, you can, if you, you can grind flax seeds, live them in an airtight container on your kitchen counter, not even refrigerated for months without um, significant oxidation, um, uh, which is quite remarkable. I think the reason people have that sense is because uh, flaxseed oil oxidizes very rapidly. You have to keep it uh, in the fridge. Even then, it oxidizes really rapidly. goes rancid. But, you know, it's, it's isolated. It's fractionated it's from the uh, flaxseed itself. The fl ground flaxseeds flax seeds are packed with antioxidants to keep that very um, unstable um, omega-3 fats um, safe. Uh, and, uh, and so again, that's why we eat whole foods because it becomes as a package deal to keep the, uh, make three uh, fatty acids from oxidizing. So you can buy them pre-milled, you can mill them yourself, whatever you want to do. What about carrageenan ass insomniac bite? I've got a video about carrageenan. Check it out. Um, bottom line, I think, uh, for people that have, um, uh, gastrointestinal inflammation may want to stay away from it. Um, uh, okay. Whoa. Um, uh, my, uh, there's so many cuts, so many questions. Um, my screen keeps, uh, keeps scrolling up. And so I, so I'm about to read something and then it disappears. Okay. Um, uh, how, whoa, keep scrolling. Okay. So, um, uh, Vin Bailey asks, how do you eat five to eight? Oh, okay. Hold on. Stop scrolling. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, Matthew asks, hello, my wife has been on a whole food plant-based diet for months and her nasal polyps are shrinking, huh? Um, uh, but her nose is still stuffy. 
does she need surgery to get rid of them or would they clear up on their own? You know, I, huh. Well, so nasal polyps can form these kind of little fingers in your nose. It's an, an inflammatory reaction. So maybe that could explain why an anti-inflammatory diet, whole plant foods could cause them to shrink. Unfortunately, there's just no data. I've never, I've not, so, I mean, that, I guess it shouldn't surprise us, but I've never seen that actually published. And so I don't know what the course of the natural history kind of, of the disease would be on a healthy diet. And so, I don't know, you'll have to tell me um, if they're getting better. Um, uh, one might want to forestall surgery to see if they continue to get better. And then if they plateau, reconsider the surgical option. It's very kind of typically very quick outpatient type surgery, but there's always risk of bleeding. And so uh, you don't want to do surgery unless you absolutely need to. So if they're shrinking, I consider talking to your um, uh, doctor about holding off to see if they go away completely. All right. Um, uh, Lance Vegan Strong says soy increases estrogen levels and so men should avoid it. It's just not true. You can check out my recent soy videos. Scott asks of, okay, that's not a question. How, oh, oh, wow, that's a great question from Alex. How do you reduce mammalian tor? Um, I, I, and you do that by decreasing your leucine intake. I've got a bunch of videos on tor. Just uh, type in T-O-R. Um, and uh, you can talk, and you can see all the dietary interventions too. Uh, to suppress the kind of engine of aging enzyme tour. Um, uh, what are my thoughts on our current system of cancer donations? Um, asks Chris. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. You mean uh, organizations that uh, that solicit donations? I, there's good organizations, there's bad organizations, probably my favorite. And if you wanted to donate to a cancer charity, I like the American Institute for Cancer Research. Um, they uh, seem to be doing more kind of diet related um, uh, research than other uh, bodies like the National Cancer, not the National Cancer Institute, the um, a other big cancer charity. Anyway, I like AICR uh, the best of like, the current options available. Um, Ruben asks, what's the best nutrition diet for losing a large amount of weight? You eat a healthy diet, right? Because, um, diets by definition don't work because you, well, you can, because there, you don't need a diet, you need a lifestyle. Otherwise you just gain it right back. I mean, you can lock yourself in a room, um, and lose all the weight you want, but then once you, you but that's, you know, by definition, not very sustainable since you get out of the room and you go back to your old habits, it goes right back up. So you need to develop a lifestyle change. You need to uh, eat healthy, healthfully, um, which is a diet packed with whole plant foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes like beans, peas, split peas, and, uh, lentils, um, uh, uh, nuts and seeds, herbs and spices, mushrooms, basically real food that grows out of the ground. Those are our healthiest choices while decreasing our healthiest choices while decreasing our intake of uh, meat, eggs, dairy, and junk food. Those that would be the healthiest way to control one's weight. And you stick with that because it would also control one's chronic disease risk. Um, uh, all right. Um, dun, dun, dun. How to now? Um, so Carson asks how to naturally increase hematocrit level through foods. So Matacrit is kind of a blood count level. Um, better to look at hemoglobin, actually. Um, but uh, the, again, how do you do anything? I mean, the answer to every question in medicine is treat the cause. Treat the cause. So why is one hematocrit low? Um, if it is because of iron deficiency anemia, then you increase your consumption of iron-rich foods and vitamin C-rich foods, which boosts the absorption of uh, healthy iron. Um, uh, but if uh, your hematocrit is low because you're bleeding in your intestines or uh, have uh, excessive uh, menstrual blood loss, um, then there's other things you can do. So, for example, check out my uh, ginger video talking about decreasing um, uh, excessive menstrual blood loss, though that may not be a problem uh, uh, for if you are menstruating. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to scroll down. Oh my God. Are we already out of time? That's crazy. Um, I am so sorry. Um, 
thank you so much for joining us for another q a i probably got through like a like i don't know 10 percent they just keep scrolling up um i will be doing new live q a's every month facebook and youtube hopefully i'll get to your questions eventually um, you can always come to the website, come to the Nutrition Facts Store, and ask a question in the comments below any video. We have moderators, volunteer moderators, that actually, you know, have like, they 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 schedule like two-hour blocks, where it's like, you're in charge of checking out the, the comments and helping answer questions and helping people. And, um, uh, uh, and so if you um, have a um, nutrition or medical background and would like to be a moderator and actually help out, we would love that. Click on volunteer opportunities at the bottom of the web page, uh, at the bottom of nutrition facts. Or, uh, and if you um, want that knowledge, you can ask a question on the website and they should be able to help you. And if you ask a question three hours later, there's another moderator on there who may give you another answer. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully all this work helps you and your family to live long, healthy lives. Thank you so much. Until next time, bye-bye.